over here to celebrate Hallelujah. pastor and co-pastor Singleton. We are excited to be here. Amen. Amen. There Amen. is a word for the house. For the entire house. Amen. So I invite anyone that, that may be uh, doing cleanup service to take a few minutes and come in if you can. <laughs> Amen. Because it's for everybody. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to ask that you open your Bibles to 1 Chronicles, the 10th chapter, the 11th chapter. 1 Chronicles 11 10. 1 Chronicles 11 10.
success. Jesus. Maybe the most expensive SUV that the pastor and his wife is driving. Well, well. Does that make success? <laughs> Maybe the largest TV ministry, the largest social ministry, the social media, maybe the most likes or the most shares or the most hearts to go across the screen when they are preaching or having daily prayer. Maybe that is what the world says. All right. Make the most successful ministry. But I humbly deduct from our scripture text today that none of the previous things that I just said is truthful in the totality of success. All right, all right. Success is defined as events or an event that accomplish the, in, the intended purpose. Yes, 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 yes. And if the man or the woman of God does not know the purpose in which God called them into ministry, then it's already a felt. All Amen. right, all right. See, one day, 30-some years ago, they was given a call to go yes, into ministry. Yes, yes, Hallelujah. Yes. Godly de de success defined by David when David was talking to his son Solomon in 1 Kings 2 and 3. He said, boy, let me tell you, do what the Lord your God commands. Yes, yes. And follow his teaching. Yes. Obey the writings and you will be successful. successful. Yes. But we don't always tell that to our children or tell that to our uh, fellow sisters or brothers in the Lord. Sometimes we just say, well, how about we just go and get a massage and we go to the movies and we'll go to the mall and we'll take some R&R &R times and that determines our success. No, it does not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here David in the scriptures, he is on his way to take back Jerusalem. David had already ran from Saul. He had already went through the call and effects of misery being called into the ministry. As soon as you're called into the ministry, as soon as you say, yes, Lord. All right, all right. I mean, not, not, not receive the robe and receive all the accolades. As soon as you say, say yes, yes Lord, Lord, your life is on the run. That's right. Your life isn't on the run. You're just entertaining something yeah. nice to do yeah. on a Sunday morning. But here David is, he's running, he's running, his enemy Saul is now gone, and now we find that in this chapter that he is on his way back to Jerusalem, and God has sent him some help. So, number one, key number one that I want you to take and put it in your memory when it talks about success, God will send people. And these people will become stronger. People. Thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you. I want to talk to the people. I want to talk to the people who is following ministry. If you have been following someone in the ministry and they're truly a man or woman of God, you better know that God is going to make you stronger. Yeah. Yes. 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 Maybe you're speaking to me to stop. 
But he kept sending them and made them stronger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God will send you people and the people will increase in strength. Everything won't blow them over. Now some people may, some people may step to the side, but maybe they weren't supposed to be with you anyway. Some people may step back and talk about you, but maybe they wasn't supposed to be among you anyway. But the ones who stay, the yes. ones who fight, the ones who don't give up, become stronger. The Bible says that the mighty man became stronger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God for mighty men and women of God. Hallelujah. Because when I look out here, I see a whole lot of strong Davids. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The marking of success. The people who attach themselves. Hallelujah. To that place of somebody else's call. These people are different. You guys. Oh, God, oh, God. <laughs> You're different. Yes, you know, yes. when everybody else say, why don't you go down to, you know, our church is having a program and really what they're trying to do is, is pull you away. Because they don't understand why you're still over at the ark. Oh, right, they don't oh, understand right. why when they have arcs over their church and stained glass windows, they don't quite, you know, come over and, and, and come over. And what they're really trying to do, the, the secret motives. All right, all right. The secret motives. They don't understand right. that you have been attached yes. to somebody yes, with God. Yes, 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 yes. If you stay where you're supposed to stay, you will become stronger yes. and mightier. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. It doesn't quite make sense, but it's the way the word of God goes. Yes, yes. The second key that I want you to pull out from this scripture is that these men became slayers. <laughs> they became stronger with their fight. Hallelujah. All right, all right. Anybody that knows me know I kind of like a good fight once in a while. Once in a while. Once in a while. I don't mind having a little, a least, maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit to get out of my system. Right. <laughs> maybe for the squirrel. I don't know, but I, once in a while I got to get it out. Well, these men became even stronger in the way they like to slay things. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm not just talking the word of God bears me out because in verse 11, it says there's a man there. His name is Jason Bean. He slain 300 of the enemy. Come on. Yes. And, what, and when you look into uh, um, the book of Samuel, which parallels with this, Samuel said, let, let me make it clear. He really slain 800 of the enemy by himself. He became stronger because he was following the man of God that he was sent to. And then in verse 14, there's another young man by the name of Eleazar. And he and said that he fought with David in a grain field, in a barley field. Now, and it was just them two. And they was doing their thing because he had became Stronger, and he goes on to say that they're not even the big dogs of, of the captains because they're talking about the captains of the armies that were sent to be with him. But they will make a comment to say, and they wasn't even the top three. Jesus. So it doesn't matter if you're in that inner circle or that outer circle or that outer, outer circle, you will become stronger. Yes, you will yes, become yes. players of the enemy. Joe Blow, it isn't Sam, it isn't Billy. The enemy comes and fights your body. The enemy comes and fights your mind. The enemy comes and discourages men. It uses those that don't know the Lord to come and attack you. It may even use those that know the Lord to come and attack you. And it'll be just that little push that, that makes you feel lower and lower and lower. But you will become Players of your enemies. Hallelujah. Because you are the mighty man of David. Hallelujah. Well, in verse number 22, I don't want you to think it stops there. They have another young man by the name of Benaiah. And he's equal to what David did. What did David do? He fought Goliath. It says that he came against giants as well. And he fought men that even looked like lions. And not only that, he went into a field 
and the field was full of snow. And he fought a lion and killed the lion. So he was able to do the things that David did. So I don't know everything that this man or woman of God, what, what little bit they read, that's nothing Amen. compared to how they stood yes. in the day of anniversary. Yes. Anniversary. Have you had something in your life all right, that all you right. need to stand yes. for? Yes. And you yes. need to say, yes. I'm not yes. like them. I can't. Oh, yes, you can. Because you're the mighty man. Yes. Then you had to sneak back in 
from those men into the men around us, and you risk your life for me just to have some water. That's what God will do when people love you. Amen, amen. Since you all kinds of crazy things, just because they heard you, they thought you might like. Someone brought me some Skittles today. Woo! Amen, of <laughs> <laughs> Now, I didn't ask for no Skittles, no. but about a year ago, they knew I had a little addiction to Skittles. Not too many Skittles to sour ones. Amen. All right, all right. So then when I got to church, I had me some Skittles. And I thought about this. I said, now, no fact. I didn't ask for no Skittles, but the other day I was kind of thinking. I said, no, I bet not. Mess with. So David took <laughs> the water. And instead of David drinking the water, uh -huh. you know, like a king would, let's pour it into my golden glass and drink it. He said, no, these men have risked their life. The blood of them was on me. They, had, they died just trying to bring me back water. I didn't even ask them. So he took the water and he offered it to God. Hey! Yes, oh, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. That's what a man will do that is loving the Lord. Yes, yes. yes. Right. You may say, well, first lady, did I, did I buy you a blue suit? Where is it at? How come you ain't wore it? Well, maybe the Lord had her to give it to someone else. Amen. Amen. Maybe she wanted to be a blessing. I, I don't know if you have done that, but when men love you, when they have a heart for you, you don't even have to say it. You don't even have to say it. They'll surprise you. And that's what these men did. They surprised David. It was on their heart to please David. They wanted to do anything they could. So when he offered the water and gave it to the Lord, don't you know they even got stronger? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They even got stronger. Amen. They said the water that we sacrificed for, can you imagine, was a sacrifice to the Almighty God? Yes. And it was accepted. Come on now. Yes. When you serve someone, hallelujah, yes. the marking of success is by what the people are starting to do around you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And these was the top of the mighty men. They could have had anybody to go run that in. Number four, the marking of a successful ministry is how the people start to appear to God. They start changing. They start changing. You, you might come in the church one way. You might come in broken, beat up, battered. You might come in and say, don't nobody really want me because of what I've done, what I've been through, yes. but God sent you somewhere, and all of a sudden you start changing, yes. and it's not that you just want to be anybody's servant, you know, because the world tells you to be a servant is to be on the low end of the totem pole, but Jesus said if you really want to make it, you got to serve, and all of a sudden you get a servant heart like Jesus, my God, my God, and you start changing. How did they change? Well, First Chronicles 12 and 22 tells us that they changed in a very separate way. Hallelujah. How did they change? It said that all of a sudden, these people started looking like the host Jesus. of the army. Jesus. Oh, God. Jesus. Hey, Hallelujah. do you know what that means? Yeah. Do you know what the host of the army of the Lord looks like? My God, the host of the army of the Lord encamps. <laughs> they claim back what the enemy stole from them without fear. Hallelujah. They, they, they claim back everything that was stolen from them. They never back down. Hallelujah. They prepare for war. They stay ready for war.
when other ones do, you stay. <laughs> amen, amen. That means when everybody else talking about the ark, you're like, wait a minute, what you say? All right, all right. You say, what did you do? I, I thought I missed Oh, you were, oh, you wasn't. Okay, thank you. <laughs> what did you say about first lady? Oh, I misunderstood. Okay. All right, all okay. right. Because the host of the army, they stand for God. Yeah. 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 The mighty men were starting to look yeah. at the host of the army of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. See, the host of the army of the Lord, they, they're ready. They're ready for whatever comes against or try to come against the almighty God. And that's the heart of the mighty men. That's the heart of the ark of Jesus. Yeah. And I know that's the heart of Enoch's walk. Yeah. I know that's the heart of Lighthouse of Love. Yeah. I know that's the heart of the people of God that yeah. became mighty because they would not yeah. walk away. Yeah. They would not let him not push him out. Yeah. They sang hallelujah. Yeah. They sang and they celebrated. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because in First Chronicles 12, 39, not only did they fight, not only was they ready to go down when it was time to go down, not only was they trying to be a blessing, a blessing, a blessing, they was ready to celebrate. <laughs> they was ready to celebrate. Yeah. They had all kinds of camels, all kinds of beasts, all kinds of crocs coming in. When it was time to celebrate, they fought hard and they played even harder. They fought hard when they need to. They prayed when they needed to. They fought the uh, the lions and the uh, giants. But when it was time to celebrate, yes. <laughs> it was time to celebrate. Why don't we put our hands together for two people who's not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? So But I just declare a decree into your life right now. You're going to understand the mightiness that God has placed within each and every one 
of you. Hallelujah. Bless God. 